Hello and welcome to another episode of Anygames Talent Talk, a show where I sit down and talk to various people from the anime and video games industry to learn a bit more about them, the projects they've been involved with, and the characters they've brought to life. Today I'm talking with Sarah Wiedenheft, known for her roles as Toru in Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, Gren Zeno in Dragon Ball Super, and Suika in Dr. Stone. We discuss how she got her start in voice acting, what it's like playing the strongest being in the Dragon Ball universe, and whether the process is different when voicing a lead character compared to a side character. This episode was filmed live on location at Oz Comic Con Sydney 2019, and I hope you really enjoyed this one. So, let's jump into the episode. Alright, first off, a question that you probably get quite a lot uh, when doing these interviews. Could you give us a brief uh, introduction to how you started uh, becoming a voice actor, or how you became a voice actor? Yeah, um, so uh, ever since I was little, I was very into like the entertainment world in general. Um, I you know, jumped into doing ballet, jazz, uh, tap dancing, and then I progressed into doing theater and choir and musicals and like you name it. I was very into uh, just being on stage somewhere. Um, and so at some point, um, uh, my dad was in the Air Force, so I moved around a lot. and. Um, I ended up in Texas, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area where Funimation resides. Um, and I'd always been interested in voice acting because it was like another you know, form of acting. So I'm like, maybe it's fun. You know, like worst, worst case scenario, it's, uh, they say no and it's not for me. Or maybe I just I hate it or something. Um, but um, I signed up for the open auditions and eight months later uh, I get called in to do an audition and um, they just cut me. Nice. <laughs> so, yeah. So when people mention anime, one of the most iconic series that comes to mind is Dragon Ball Z. Uh -huh. So what was it like being able to be involved in that series a little bit and not only just involved, playing the, the well, you could argue that it's the most powerful character in the whole universe of all of the Dragon Ball series, Grand Zeno. So yeah, he's pretty OP. <laughs> um, it was, it's still kind of mind blowing. Um, like I never, I never imagined that I would ever be able to be in that because I remember as a kid watching Dragon Ball, which was my favorite season of of, uh, of all the Dragon Balls. Um, and so like I was like, oh, that's so cool. And I thought that they weren't going to continue with it because. You know, at, before Super started coming out, like they were just like, no, years. we're done, yeah. we're done. Um, but then they came out with Super, I'm like, oh, okay, so maybe there's a chance I might snaggle in there, I don't know. Um, but uh, then I remember getting the auditions for this, um, for Zeno, and I'm like, what a weird candy baby. Um, let me try something. And at first I thought I'd do something like, you know, just like typical, uh, just, just a little kid, cutesy thing. I'm like, mm, but he looks so weird. I want to do something a little bit more sinister, and somehow, yeah, that that yeah. ended up being like they're like, yeah, that's what we wanted. Like, we wanted that weird creepiness. Like, oh, may might murder you, but also very into playing. That's right. Yeah. That <laughs> could could annihilate your whole universe in a second if you say the wrong thing. So everyone kind of walks on eggshells, and it's a pretty cool character. So yeah. I was going to ask if that was a voice you came up with, or if that was like direct, uh, like collaboration between you and the director. But you kind of answered that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's something I kind of just like somehow got out of me. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so fun. He is such a weird character, but he's so cute at the same time. It's so strange. Um, every single time I'd, I'd gone into there uh, to do a session with him, I would always laugh after every single take I do. It looks like a fun character to play. Yeah, and it's like the weirdest thing going back and forth between the future and past, you know? Yep. There's a lot of times, like, if it wasn't... Um, a very long scene and it was just between those two I would just record back and forth with myself without having to like go back and go in for the next right. Zeno I would just like go talk back and forth and it was the funniest thing I'm like I, I probably look like an insane person to somebody yeah it was so, fun so over the years you've had the, uh, the chance to voice the lead character in a number of series as well uh, currently you're playing uh, not lead but like one of the core cast of Suica in Doctor Stone. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, you also you know in you know. Uh, mm -hmm. When uh, approaching or getting the character that's a lead, do you have to take that a little bit differently to like voicing a side character? Or is there more effort involved, more preparation? Um, it depends from person to person. Um, I I typically like to just jump in and uh, just learn about the character with a director and have them tell me everything that I need to know about it and then like organically go with each step with them. Um, 
And the thing is, uh, we usually don't know that we have something until we go in for it. Um, so like, I, I got called in like, hey, can you come in for uh, Anthony for, you know, uh, for like this long? I'm like, yeah, sure. Um, and then he tells me like, oh, you're you know. I'm like, oh, oh, sh oh, 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 oh goodness, okay. <laughs> um, so it's kind of just random and you just kind of jump right into it. So don't want to get too dark, but mm -hmm. you also voiced Toru in Dragon Maid as well. So uh, after the recent tragedy that happened to Kyoto Animation, has that character become a little bit more special or meant something a little bit more to you since that event? Um, she's always been like deep within my heart. I mean, I I can't I can't say that like it's a, that much different, you know, because of the incident, like. It kind of seems a little bit strange to love them more than you already had, Do you but I feel it? Or yeah. That they may not be more, or like they could be up in the air. Or uh, I don't know what's gonna yeah. happen, but I, I did definitely feel feel very sad for that. That was absolutely terrible. terrible. But yeah, I think about that. I'm like, gosh, I hope they're okay. You know. Uh, but. So Thanks for joining me for this quick interview today. Yeah. Um, before we head off, where can fans follow you online or follow your work? Or what, what can they be excited for that you're in at the moment? Okay, um, uh, so I'm on Twitter. With uh, My Twitter handle is Sarah Wiedenheft, just straight up. Um, and on Instagram, I'm Swedish Fish. Because <laughs> it's funny <laughs> and ironic. Um, and uh, so currently I'm in Dr. Stone as Suica and, uh, you know, in The Girl Who Chants Love. Um, and... But currently, there is one called Plunderer that's supposed to be coming out in fall. And um, I don't remember her name. I think it's like Maya or something like that. But she's the blue-haired girl, um, the main girl in Plunderer. And I'm really excited for that show because it's so cool. The awesome. plot's amazing. Thank you so much for your time today. All right. It's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Talent Talk. Look forward to the next episode where I'll be sitting down with another voice actor from the anime industry and picking their brain. If you liked this episode, please consider subscribing on YouTube or on your podcasting platform of choice so you never miss an episode. And feel free to communicate with me on Twitter at anygame underscore au. That's A-N-I-G-A-M-E underscore A-U. And let me know who you'd love to see on the show. This has been Joel from Anygame, and I'll catch you in the next episode.